Hey, what's up guys, JB here. So as you may know, you know, over the past few months in War of the Visions, we have started getting an all new type of vision card here in the game. And rather than impacting different elements, these cards are all about powering up specific jobs or weapon types. It's really a good idea in theory. Uh, the implementation though is just super rough around the edges right now, because unfortunately within the game client, there just really isn't any filtering or, or any enhanced visibility with these cards and how they may be impacting your party at that given moment. Honestly, it's just kind of a mess and unfortunately the problem isn't going away but instead you know as we get more and more of these cards it's just going to continue to compound and compound as time goes on so really that's just sort of my short spiel here at the beginning targeted directly at gumi you guys really need to get something into the game client quickly to address this issue to be honest, this enhanced filtering of equipment and vision cards and etc. is something that is long overdue within the game already, but it's even more needed now with the introduction of these new job cards. Now on that note, you know, I do have kind of a solution to that problem that I have been working on and I will show that to you guys here shortly. Before we get into that though, you know, I do kind of want to take a long view look at kind of how this system is being implemented and what value those cards are going to bring for you, you know, not only today, but also in the future, and, you know, what are the kind of the best ways to think about those cards and incorporating them into your various teams uh, and also where I think the system is headed and you know how your approach to it may change over time. So let's quickly talk about it. You know, as of today, if you've managed to collect all of the job cards that has been issued, we have seven of these cards available today in Global. And they are coming out at a clip of roughly two, you know, sometimes three of them a month. And they've pretty much completely replaced the issue of mono element effective cards within the game. So kind of looking ahead here over at the JP side, you know, so far they actually have 16 of these cards and they are roughly eight to nine months, you know, into this new job VC era. And they actually only just this past week Week, you know got their first duplicate job pairing on a card where all of the jobs that were actually applicable to the card did perfectly match one that was released previously so considering that you know it's easy to see that the mono element era isn't really going away anytime soon if we kind of extrapolate this over time, you know, we can think about maybe four months beyond where JP is now. We might be somewhere in the neighborhood of 25 cards, as I've shown here. So it is going to take a bit of time, you know, before we're sort of firmly entrenched in this multi-element, multi-job era. Now, within the cards that have been released so far over in JP, you know, there have been a number of jobs which have repeated, you know, several times. Uh, most notably, Fist Jobs has shown up, uh, I think, six times so far. So that has started encouraging some experimentation with, you know, uh, multi-element comps of those singular jobs and I'm sure we'll start to see more of that you know as more cards get issued into the game but assuming you have collected several of these cards here on global today you know how can you best utilize them or think about them in, in the current context of today's meta uh, and that's kind of what we're going to dive into here next so let's look at this again kind of from a timeline perspective we are currently firmly entrenched in a mono element era, meaning that the majority of teams out there are running a single element. Now, since the second anniversary, we've also been seeing some dual element effective Dark Esper vision cards. And there has been some experimentation, you know, in terms of mixing a couple of those elements together. Uh, I would say the most successful one thus far has been Water and Ice, you know, via the Dark Odin card. But at least as of today, you know, compromises do need to be made, you know, when you are forming that type of party. Uh, most notably, you know, you may need to incorporate some older uh, rainbow effective vision cards in order to accomplish it. So I do think that that is where these job based vision cards can really come in and help amp up the power in particular of those dual element teams. And I do think, you know, as more of these cards come into the game, that is really going to enable those kind of parties even further. Uh, it's already happening. And, you know, as we get more, it's just going to continue to compound on itself. So the ideal setup there would, would most likely look like, you know, maybe two job based vision cards that would apply to the whole party and then potentially a dark esper card that could fill in that third slot uh, and then you know depending on how deep we're looking into the era you know you could actually fill in maybe some secondary job based vision cards or maybe just fill them in with older rainbow effective cards the main takeaway there though is that the further we get into this job based era uh, the stronger and more powerful that, that these dual element teams will become now as we get into that third anniversary of the game and beyond that's where i think we're really going to start seeing experimentation with 
mono job teams. Uh, I think that the application though of a single job across all three slots in your party is somewhat limited, uh, but you know, there may be some good ones that come along, but uh, I think certainly the idea of it, you know, at a minimum is really fun. I think that you will find though with those teams that they are gonna be missing key ingredients to really having accessible, uh, you know, viable team in high-end PVP, whether it's a tanking aspect or a supportive aspect or some other key ingredient there. Now, in terms of this job-based system really opening up and getting into high gear, I really don't envision that happening until maybe towards the end of this year or potentially even beyond that, maybe even into next year, where I think we'll really start being able to capitalize on full rainbow teams or multi-job teams, you know, utilizing the power of these cards. And the main reason for that is that, you know, we really need to reach a critical mass of the amount of these cards being available in the game and, you know, the amount of overlap, you know, between the job pairings that actually exist that you can actually fill out those six slots in your party optimally. So I think in that sense, you know, I, I would almost compare it to the first year of the game, you know, otherwise known as the pre-mono element days where, you know, at that point we were just sort of amassing different cards that looked interesting or maybe had a good effect for some units that we had in mind. It really wasn't until Gumi added elemental effects on vision cards and mastery abilities to the units that really the mono element era then kicked off into high gear. So in that sense, you know, I am sort of waiting for another shoe to drop from Gumi, you know, and really taking this multi-element era to a new level. You know, maybe they'll introduce something like a job-based mastery or, you know, something similar to the game in the future. So I did want to kind of take a step back and kind of show it in this way so that, you know, you could have a sense of the things that you've collected and amassed over time and kind of put a lot of work into in terms of those mono element teams, that's really not going to go anywhere. You know, that's going to continue to be viable in the game. And I would say that that really is a benefit for free to play folks and casual players in particular, uh, maybe folks who don't pull on each and every banner. You know, those things that you've invested into over time, you know, they're going to continue to be usable and, you know, in a good spot in the game. You know, simply because this new era uh, is very slow played and it's going to take a while to have the legs underneath it to make it a truly good and viable system. Because I think honestly how I have this timeline set up currently, it's it's really best case scenario. Uh, that's if you've been able to collect and amass, you know, all of the particular pieces that are going to be needed for these teams. Obviously, most players aren't going to be able to do that and pull on each of those cards, you know, as they're released. So, you know, depending on the competitive level that you play at, the timeline may even be pushed out even further. So that said, you know, here is kind of my thoughts here on the system as a whole. And let's start with the positives here first. Now for veteran players, you know, mono element at this point, is very stale. We've been team building that way for two years and you know we're ready for something different and something fresh to kind of alternate and change our approach to the game. So in that regard you know I think this system is a great idea. It is very much needed and you know people I think are excited about it just to kind of change up how they play. We just I think need to work on the implementation you know as I was kind of alluding to earlier. Now my second pro here is going to be a slow rollout. You know as I was just mentioning there a minute ago I think having it as sort of a slow burn system is going to be kind of a net positive in the end for the players because in that regard it does respect the things that you've collected and amassed over time by not completely invalidating them overnight with a brand new meta. Now point number three here is going to go hand in hand with that first point and that I think is the reason why people are excited about it because it's going to amplify the creativity that you can have you know in terms of putting together a team or maybe even just amplifying the fun factor you know for putting certain units of differing elements alongside each other for story or lore reasons. Whereas today that may not be optimal to do you know just because they have those differing elements and uh, maybe the cards that you have aren't really effective for everyone now pro number four here is going to be that your idea or approach as a player is going to shift from hard countering an element with the opposing elements say fire against ice for example at that point this is just kind of formulaic and just lacking some nuance in the game but when this job based system you know is in full swing it will become much more about how can i counter this specific team and how do i pr approach and solve that problem which I think is more layered and a more interesting approach and idea in general. Now my final pro here is that they actually have handed out several of these vision cards you know via collaboration raids thus far over on JP. There actually has been three of them thus far. Uh, the Yuffie VC that we'll see at the third anniversary in particular that's something that myself and many others out there actually would have pulled for. It's an amazing card that's coming in 100% free including all of the shards. So I think that that is actually a very cool thing that they have been doing thus far. 
Now shifting over to my cons here for the system in the early days, con number one is gonna be, you know, as we talked about earlier, uh, and I think what is the biggest problem, you know, as of today with this system, it's just the difficulty in using it. Full stop, you know, we need better visibility, we need better filtering options within the game client, so the players don't immediately get turned off, you know, from this system before it really has even begun here on Global. Because, you know, I can tell you right now, that is already happening. Now that said, you know, don't just throw a band-aid on there, make it elegant, you know, make it intuitive. You know, if you want to continue to push these cards out to the players and have them be interested and excited about it, this absolutely needs to be one of your highest development priorities. All right, con number two, it's going to actually mirror the pro side here. You know, for folks like me and others who've been playing for a while, we're definitely excited to kind of move beyond this mono element era. So, you know, to kind of find out that um, it's going to take a while before that gets into its full swing and we're, we're we're kind of stuck in place, you know, at least for a little while here. That is just a little bit of a downer. Uh, you know, whereas when we did hit that first anniversary of the game, it was just a swift change and we were right into the mono element era. And really there's been no looking back, you know, since that point. All right, con number three. Uh, and this is going to be that this is just adding an, yet another layer of complexity to the game. Personally, I love the added complexity uh, because I love deep diving into this game. For more casual players, uh, it, I think it's just a lot. It's, it's too much to be honest, especially added on to all of the other complexity that already exists in the game today. I think that this is where a really elegant solution to problem number one could really come in and, and mitigate this issue or, or maybe even eliminate it entirely. So I do think that that is why that first one is so very important. Now my last con here, it's, it's more of a mindset thing to be honest, but right now it's really difficult for the player to make a judgment call or even know, you know, which vision cards may be relevant to your account, both now and then especially in to the future. I think that that was a much easier call to make with mono element cards because, you know, even if you didn't pull for the latest and greatest unit, you may have went ahead and grabbed their vision card, you know, just because you knew that you may have had some investment into that element and that and that it would be a good card for you to go ahead and grab and, and power up your account. Whereas with these new job-based vision cards, you know, a new job actually may come out in the future that may align with a specific weapon group that you skipped out on earlier on. And bam, you know, now you're kicking yourself that you missed out on that vision card a few months back. Now sadly I actually wouldn't be surprised if this aspect of the system is intentional you know just to sort of maximize FOMO and encourage more pulling so that just sort of is what it is. I will say that this point you know is double trouble though because you know the majority of job vision cards you know at least early on here in the system all are limited time uh, on the Japanese side thus far nine of the first 16 cards that are introduced are actually limited time from the various collaborations that have been coming in. Definitely part of that is due to the timing you know around these anniversary events I do expect that to normalize somewhat over time, but you know, certainly is something to consider. So those are my thoughts kind of on the system as a whole and kind of looking at it from a high level. But let's dive into here next, you know, what I actually created to hopefully help mitigate some of those problem areas that we were looking at. Uh, and it is kind of a tool that I put together that kind of organizes the various job vision cards and then actually the units and elements that they're applicable for. And my hope here with this is that uh, this could be helpful to kind of quickly scan the cards which may be relevant to the jobs that you're putting together in a party to help facilitate, you know, better team building. So with that said, let's just jump jump right into that tool. So here it is guys, here is the job vision card index. Uh, it's just something that I've actually put together within uh, Google's office suite here. And I'm actually gonna share the link here in the description so all of you can access this and take a look at it for yourselves. But just sort of a quick overview on how I designed this to be used. All of this information actually is available and taken from votivecalc.com. Uh, however, when you look at it there, I do feel that it is a bit fragmented and siloed, you know, even despite the enhanced filtering options that were added in, which I will say, you know, have been super appreciated and, and thank you to Bismarck for putting those in. Your, your work is amazing. But essentially those filtering options, you know, what I have tried to do here is kind of take it a step beyond that. And the hope is that players will actually will be able to do a quick scan on the index here for the job pairings that they're interested in based on some number designations. Uh, and you can see on the left here that each job has a corresponding number assigned to it. Now thus far, you know, each card has covered anywhere from three to five of those weapon types. And the more weapon types I'd say that the card covers, I think it definitely does increase the value of that card in my opinion. But even a step beyond that, I have provided a quick glance way to actually see what the actual effects on the card are as well. You can see the icons there at the top. And I did in 
include a legend for that as well on the left side. Uh, th those first three there at the top are the ones that I would consider kind of the building blocks of a team for PvP. Uh, that's those trifecta effects of unit resist, area resist, and agility. I will say that, you know, for the majority of teams that I'm putting together, those really are going to be my primary slot vision cards in almost all cases. So I'd say in that regard, you know, you can use those icons that I have here for sort of quick scanning which cards you may actually be interested in pulling for in the future. Or for team building, you know, based on the number designation and the actual effects themselves. So, you know, just as a quick example here, say I'm particularly interested in spear type jobs, you know, maybe the latest unit that I pulled uh, is a spear wielder, you know, Shadow Links, for example. Now the number on the left there for that job is number 14. You will notice another number there on the right of it in parentheses, and that is actually how many cards of that particular weapon type are associated with it today. So we can see there that there have been three cards, you know, up through JP's timeline that are affecting spear type jobs. So what we're looking for now is the number 14 on any of the boxes here that I have tagged on the cards. So as we shift our view over onto the right side now, onto the cards themselves, you know, one thing that you will notice right away is that I do have this blue colored box around the first seven cards here. And you know, those are the cards that we already have here on Global today. Of course, beyond that, I do have all the cards that are currently released on the Japanese side as well, uh, minus the Ibarra card, because you know, that one, you know, of, of course we have our own version of that one already today. So quickly scanning through here for the number 14. I can see it on a few of them that we've actually already received in, the, in Global today. Uh, the very first one was from that Halloween card. Uh, then of course the card that came along with Shadow Links. Uh, and then the most recent one that we just received in the Slime Vision card from Dragon Quest. And that is actually another one of those free ones that you can get from the raid. So definitely make sure that you grab that one. So like I said, you know, at a quick glance, you know, I'm also able to tell, you know, some of the party effects that are applicable on the card, uh, you know, in particular the Shadow Links card and the Dragon Quest card both have some physically offensive effects tied into them. So from there, we can actually take it a step further. We can actually now click on the card and drill into it. And here we can actually have a closer look. This is actually the view that I've been incorporating into my latest review videos and I've actually gotten a lot of good feedback on them. And it's actually what spurred me to kind of put this tool together here for you guys today. So I think the screen, you know, is pretty self-explanatory, but, you know, essentially what I've done is I've taken all the units that are applied to that particular card. Uh, I've divided them up by their specific elements so that, you know, that way you're able to quickly kind of see, you know, which teams you can put together from a mono sense. But maybe you can also start looking at some of the corresponding elements and kind of see how those units might fit together in a better way. Now, one last note on this page in the top left, you will notice an arrow. You can click on that and it will take you back here to the index. Uh, you can also actually click on the back arrow on your browser and it will do the same thing. So one final note here on the index, guys. When I said earlier that JP had just received their first duplicate job pairing, uh, what I meant by that is that this card here uh, featuring the Warriors of the Crystal, it has designation 6, 11, 17. Uh, it wasn't until we saw this most recent Full Metal Alchemist vision card that actually duplicated that job pairing. And these two cards actually work perfectly in tandem, you know, with all of the units, um, you know, being affected by all of the effects on the card. So that is something that we're going to continue to look for and sort of being able to truly maximizing and get full benefit from these cards going forward. So that's it, guys. That is the tool. I did put a ton of work into this and I really hope that it's helpful for all of you out there. Uh, again, I'm going to put a link to it in the description below. If it does help you guys out, you know, definitely let me know in the comments down below or maybe if you have some ideas on how I could improve it and make it better, you know, definitely let me know about that too. If it's something that's not too much work for me to implement, you know, I will definitely consider putting it in. Now, if you guys do find it valuable, I will definitely commit to keeping this updated and current, you know, for the foreseeable future. But, you know, hopefully Gumi will throw us a bone and, you know, hopefully we won't need something like this for too much longer. I definitely will not hold my breath on that front though. So that's a wrap guys. You know, if you enjoyed the video, hit that like button. It really helps me out with the YouTube algorithm. And if you like what I'm doing here on the channel, hit that subscribe button if you want to see more. And that's really all that I have to say for today. So as always, stay safe out there and I'll see you guys in the next one.